Hey there, I'm Benjamin from Love's Data. In this video, you'll learn the nine biggest mistakes that you need to avoid when managing your campaigns in Google Ads. By avoiding these common mistakes, you'll put yourself ahead of the competition. You'll be rocking Google Ads in no time. And even if you don't have time to apply all of the tips to your own campaigns today, even a small change can have a positive impact on the performance of your account. Let's jump in and cover the nine biggest mistakes in Google Ads. Mistake number one is not using keyword match types. There are five main keyword match types that you need to be aware of. These are broad match, broad match modified, phrase match, exact match, and negative match. If you're just using broad match keywords, then your ads will be displayed on a wide range of keywords, which means you'll need lots of negative keywords to ensure your ads appear for the most relevant terms. Here's a comparison of the different keyword match types that can trigger your ads. You can see as we move from broad match to using broad match modifiers, you will reduce the number of impressions of your ads. As we move to phrase and exact match, we become even more precise. Exact match keywords can be useful for focusing in on your most important keywords, but they also come with limited search volume. So you'll need to balance the keyword match types you use in your ad groups. Let's head into our account to see keyword match types in action. After you've logged into your account, you just need to select keywords. This will then show you all of the keywords you're bidding on. Keywords inside square brackets are exact match keywords. Keywords in quote marks are phrase match. Keywords without brackets or quote marks are broad match. And you might also notice keywords with plus signs. These are broad match modified keywords. To learn more about the different match types, I've included links to extra resources in the description below this video. Mistake number two is being too shy with negative keywords. Adding lots of negative keywords won't hurt the performance of your campaigns. In fact, it will help you achieve higher click-through rates and your ads will be more relevant as people are searching. You can view existing negative keywords by selecting keywords like we did when we were viewing keyword match types. Then you just need to select negative keywords at the top of the window. This will show you a list of the negative keywords that have been added to your campaign or ad group. If you find that you're adding the same keyword to more than one campaign, then you can create a negative keyword list in the shared library. This will allow you to manage a single list of negative keywords that are applied to multiple campaigns. Mistake number three is skipping the use of branded keywords. I found that bidding on your own branded terms is some of the cheapest traffic you can acquire from Google Ads. But it's not just about cost, it's also about visibility and conversions. Having a paid ad along with your organic listing on search results will lead to more clicks. Google and Bing have both done studies on incremental clicks and found that running ads on branded terms will increase your traffic. And since you get to control the message and landing page, you'll also see higher conversion rates. Mistake number four is only having one ad variation per ad group. You always wanna be testing new things, and this includes your ad variations. If you only have one ad in each of your ad groups, you're likely to be missing out big time. You absolutely want to be testing your ads. Having two ads within each of your ad groups allows you to test different calls to action and messaging to see what works and what doesn't work. There are also different types of ads you can create depending on the type of campaign you're managing inside your Google Ads account. For example, if you're managing a search campaign, then you should try running a responsive search ad along with a standard text-based ad to see which format provides the best results. And if you haven't checked your ads in a while, then it's also worth checking that your text ads are making use of the expanded format. Ensure you're using all of the three available headlines and both of the available description lines for your ads. Here are five things you can start testing in your ads right now. These include location-specific details, testing different calls to action, including credentials and awards, trying different selling points, including prices and promotions and try testing changes to punctuation and capitalization. You should always be testing. Mistake number five is not considering the relationship. It's important to consider all of the elements, the keyword, the ad, and the landing page. The better the relationship between these elements, the better the performance of your campaign. 
It's simple, it's logical, but it's often overlooked, and not just by beginners. Mistake number six is inaccurate or missing conversions. It's important to track conversions when you launch your campaign. If conversion tracking isn't set up, then it makes it harder to report on the performance of your ads. Conversion tracking can be confusing because there are different options when it comes to Google Ads. You can configure conversion tracking directly inside your Google Ads account and import conversions from Google Analytics. I typically recommend importing conversions from Google Analytics because it's the quickest and easiest way to see conversions inside Google Ads. You can view and configure conversion tracking inside your Google Ads account. Let's take a look. Inside your account, select Tools and Settings, and then Conversions. This allows to see any conversions that have already been configured. To create a new conversion, click the plus sign. You can choose from Website, App, Phone Calls, or Import. To learn more about the different types of conversions in Google Ads, check out the resources in the description below this video. If you're looking to import conversions from Google Analytics, then select Import, and then choose Google Analytics. You'll then be able to import conversions into Google Ads for any goals or transactions that you're tracking inside Google Analytics. Mistake number seven is poor landing page experience. If you're really serious about getting the most out of your campaigns, then you really need to be starting with the landing pages. You need to think about where people land and then work from there. And if you don't have a suitable landing page, you might want to reconsider launching that new campaign. Rather than investing in something that won't work, spend the time fixing your landing pages, or at least setting up some quick optimization tests before you launch your campaign. Mistake number eight is not using the search terms report. Because of the keyword match types, there's a difference between the keyword you're bidding on and the search term that someone enters when they're on Google. The search term report allows you to see what people are searching for. Review these search terms. You'll find the report within the Keywords tab. Just click on Search Terms. You should spend time here on a regular basis reviewing the search queries and deciding if they're good, in which case you should add them to an ad group. If they're not good, then you'll want to add them as a negative keyword. Let's head into our account to see the actual search terms people are using to find our ads. All you need to do is select Keywords and then choose Search Terms at the top of the window. You'll then be able to see all of the different keywords people have used to see your ads. If you're already bidding on a particular keyword, you'll see Added in the Added Excluded column. It's a good idea to spend time reviewing all of the terms you're not currently bidding on and decide if they're appropriate for your campaign. Mistake number nine is relying on machine learning. There are some great opportunities for automating aspects of your Google Ads account, like automated bidding, responsive ads, and even smart campaigns. However, when it comes to Google Ads, I've found it's never a case of one size fits all. This is why experimenting is critical. You need to be testing different features and settings to ensure they provide the best results. This includes testing your ads, testing keywords, bids, and budgets, right through to experimenting with new features and different types of campaigns. Experimenting helps to ensure the changes you are making are driving the results you need for your campaign. It's an important part of optimization. So they're the nine biggest mistakes in Google Ads that you need to avoid. And the great thing with Google Ads is that once you start optimizing your campaigns, you'll quickly see the improvement. Even spending one day a month checking and improving your campaigns using these tips can have an impact. Remember that the key to success with Google Ads is to consider the relationship between these three critical elements, the keyword that you're targeting, the ad that you're displaying, and the landing page that you're sending people to. The better the relationship, the better the performance of your campaigns. So what's stopping you? Load up your account if you haven't already and put a big tick next to each of these common pitfalls and rock your account. You can and will succeed at getting the clicks and conversions you're aiming for. If you want to learn more about Google Ads, then join me in my Google Ads course, where you'll learn practical skills you can apply to your own campaigns. You can find a link to join the course in the description below this video. Do you have any tips you'd like to add? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, then please like it so I know to make more videos like this one. See you next time.